Hi everyone, uh, happy to be here with you. My name is Moshe Shimon, I'm from Amdocs. I'm heading the product management team of uh, Open Network, which is the division that is actually building NGOSS and orchestration uh, for the networks. And um, um, in my session, I would like to go over and present and to give an overview how we see the evolution, or the evolution of the monetization and the network management when it's coming to 5G standalone. So if we are looking about what are the foundation, what are the key changes that is happening in the 5G? So we, first of all, a very key or important part is about the cloudification. So we see the cloudification of the RAN, we see the disaggregation, we see that the element of the 5G core, all of them are going to, use, are going to be based on containers and, and uh, virtual functions, including, of course, also uh, the, fa the fact that some of the services and, uh, are going to run on the edge and also related to what we are looking about, the private networks. So this is one big change or one big foundation that is happening. The second one is about the 5G slicing. So the, with 5G, we actually been giving the option to the operators and the operators can actually go and launch now new different type of services using slices. And the key part here is that those slices are not just about the radio part and not just about the one. There are actually slices that are actually crossing different domains. So we'll talk about it later on. We'll see it between the run part, the transport part, the core. And it's also about the fact that I need to connect not just about the broadband and some shared slices, but also I want to be able to give for the business, for the B2B, also the option to go into really guarantee an end-to-end -end committed SLA uh, with different type of quality of experience. And this is something that is a little bit changing compared to the situation today, which many times those, uh, the connectivity is related to kind of best effort. And now with the slides, the operator can go and, and, and we'll talk about how it's also been able to monetize. And that's bringing me to the third part that you see on the right side, that actually now uh, the operator can come and, uh, and, and provide on top of the and on top of the technology and the foundation that we see and that we talked about the cloudification and, and the slicing. Now new type of packages, new type of, uh, for example, now to sell some parts of the net, some assets of the network to sell, for example, a different type of services that committing and give an end to end, for example, latency or a specific amount of availability. Uh, and, and really create this kind of uh, different uh, packages. This is one part. Another part is about how fast they can come and introduce new services. And so the, the aspect of the time to market become also a very critical part. So those three, those three and, and of course there are more, uh, we, we could talk about other aspects, but these are uh, the one of the, the three key aspects that we see uh, that actually change are going to change the 5G network. And again, it's not just about a new a new radio. And we're referring more to the to the aspect when it's coming to the 5G standalone, which is changing the radio, changing the core, and also changing the transport and how an end-to-end -end solution uh, can run on top of it uh, with a different criteria. So the, the, can, the next uh, question is about how it's actually uh, going to change the management. So we can talk about, we spoke about a little bit about what is happening to the network itself, about the, the cloudification, about the fact that I need to have a, a new 5G core, and there is also change in the, in the backhaul. Uh, in, in this uh, presentation, I want more to focus about what is happening and what is going to be changed in the orchestration part and the network management or what we call the end-to-end -end 5G management and how it's related to the other stack, to the DSS stack, uh, to the billing, to the charging. So it's can, uh, we can actually go in also to uh, provide monetization solution uh, on top of it. So first of all, the fact that, uh, as we mentioned, that more and more uh, elements of the network are going to be uh, containerized and, and, uh, and uh, virtualized, I need to run and to have an end-to-end -end orchestration, the NFV orchestration, that's actually going to run and to manage the lifecycle management of those elements. The second part, it has to be model-driven because I will need to be able to come, and as we mentioned, the fact that it has to be very uh, the time to market is very critical, and I want to uh, and I want to have a one area, a one place that are actually doing an end-to-end -end design of those uh, new services. 
the real time inventory, uh, because if it, if it now, if we're looking about the current uh, mobile network, the inventory was more an offline tool for the IT. Here we're talking about a real time inventory that all the time need to be synchronized because the amount of changes that is happening in the network. So the inventory or the real time part of it become also a very critical part and need to be and it has to have this kind of transformation compared to the situation today. And the last important part is about the assurance uh, and closed loop. So people can argue, yes, assurance and so on. That was, this is something we are we having for the last 20 years. That's correct. But we didn't have this kind of closed loop, meaning I want to be able to get this kind of telemetry and monitoring from the network and, and also from the subscriber. We'll talk about in the way that we're doing it in the standard way, which for example, with NWDAF. But I want to be able to, to give the orchestration the option to go and to understand now there is a degradation, for example, in the size performance and to do on the fly the changes in the network in order to meet the SLA and the KPI of the slice. And this is the, this is the thing that is, is going to be an add-on on top of the existing uh, assurance uh, classical FMPM systems which are exist today. So if we're zooming in in another level to the 5G orchestration, um, and uh, we are looking about in, in the way it's uh, defined in 3GPP, it's actually built on three uh, layers. It's, uh, first of all, it's first of all related to the CSMF, which is the, the layer that actually defining the services and, and getting the orders with, with the design that actually are managing, for example, uh, the, the slices, getting it from, uh, from the BSS or with all the slice parameters. And then we have the NSMF, which is the network slice management function, uh, which is again a logical entity that it sits in, inside the end-to-end -end service orchestration. And the NSMF is actually responsible to get the request of the slice, uh, the slice uh, parameters and actually do the, what we call a very intelligent decomposition, get uh, indication that maybe something needs to be changed and, and also doing everything related to what we call also to the design assign process verify that actually the network and the different domains can actually uh, 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 complete or activate uh, the slice uh, based on the criteria that are uh, predefined and then we have the last part which is the nssmf which is the network slice submit uh, submit management function which is actually responsible to, uh, to talk and to delegate it to the domain controller, understand uh, uh, the constraints of the domain. For example, it can be the run domain or the transport domain or the core domain. And based on that, uh, uh, update and configure and, and, uh, and, and set the configuration parameters to the domain controller. Uh, so it can adjust and actually uh, complete uh, the instantiation of the slice. So this is related to what we call the, the day zero, day one, that we're just actually building the slice. Of course, later there is also the, uh, all of those three layers that I uh, described also need to handle the full life cycle of the slice. So if I need now to scale it, if I need now, I want to monitor it and understand if I need to change parameters of the slice or maybe I need to shift or maybe I need to open out a process that is actually adding more resources to the slice. Then maybe it's, I need for those to, in order to, increase the bandwidth of the slice or, or we use a delay of the slice, I need now to change also uh, actually physically uh, uh, items in the network. So this is the kind of logic that the NSMF uh, will take uh, and will handle. So th that was related to the, what we are doing actually uh, with the slice. Uh, but even if we're zooming before we actually uh, start shading and managing the life cycle of the slice, we also need to, first of all, to go and to build the function. And the function can be, for example, the radio uh, uh, or the UPF, for example, the user plan function or other aspect that we have in the core. And, and here we are talking about that uh, the orchestration in the 5G, we are talking about the 5G standalone, need to have this kind of intelligence to take decision where to place the function because it's not static as it was in the 4G networks, meaning that I need now to go and really understand if something is changed in the, maybe in the underlay, maybe I don't have enough bandwidth in the transport or there is any degradation of the radio performance or maybe I need now to move the slice, uh, to move, sorry, the function the user plan function or the application itself to another location. 
And all of those, these are the decisions that uh, the orchestration takes. So it's intent-based orchestration, and, and, and it's actually implementing what we call homing and placement. So based on the criteria, uh, as for example, the latency or criteria of the GTA or criteria of the what is the actual uh, performance, and, and maybe I need to understand where I need to, to use the uh, hardware acceleration. So the orchestration is actually working very close with the inventory system to really understand in each time where I have the resources and what is the status of the resource. And maybe in the, some area I'm, I'm running out of memory or I need to add, uh, to have, uh, to add more compute uh, and, and then take, and and then take uh, decisions when a request is coming, actually where to place the network function or where to place the application uh, according to the real status of the network. So this is everything related what we call to the home placement or to the intelligent uh, uh, function placement. Uh, and this is again on top of uh, on top of what uh, we just spoke before, which is related to how I'm orchestrating and handling and the end to end life cycle of the slice. And what we can see also here is that uh, we did this kind of integration uh, with Azure, uh, with Microsoft Azure. So Microsoft here, they are providing uh, the edge location, the pops, and the, with, uh, with their edge uh, services. And we also instantiate and managing a firm uh, in the core with, uh, with OpenNet, which is the uh, end of charging and policy function. So we actually orchestrate all of those uh, network function, and we are managing the different loads, the different loads and the, and the application that need to run on the edge or or at the, or the core, again, according to the status and the situation uh, of the network itself. So till now, I, I mainly describe what is the role of the orchestration and uh, why uh, uh, for 5G standalone, the orchestration is now becoming much more intelligent in order to handle the end-to-end -end slicing. And we spoke about it, it's coming between different domains. And I, I mentioned also, we spoke about, about the edge and the homing and placement and the role of the orchestration there. The, the third part is about, okay, now how I can monetize it, meaning how can I give more indication to the uh, BSS layer, to the charging and to the customer experience based on this information, based on the understanding, based on the, all the analytics that uh, both the network gives me and the orchestration that actually handled all the processes that we mentioned before, how can we go now use this information and give the operator and the option to come and, and to provide more uh, deeper granular uh, services, improve the, and, and give, for example, new packages with a different type of quality of experience. Come and say maybe to charge based on the performance, maybe to have kind of, uh, when we're talking about over the top application, give them different type of uh, different type of resources based on the based on actual usage and, and uh, charge and build this kind of different pricing packages accordingly. So all of that is is a set of uh, capabilities that uh, we build together uh, here in Andox together with with our charging and the uh, and, uh, policy and uh, with uh, giving the indication that we are getting from directly from the network and from the NWDF, which is ma managing or giving the indication of, uh, of the subscriber, uh, of the subscriber status and, and, the, and the analytic that we are gathering uh, from the subscribers. Based on that, we are indicating and building this kind of monetization packages that again, then uh, can, uh, can the, the operator can go and build and uh, as we mentioned, the different uh, different uh, packages that uh, give them the option to monetize. So, just then as an example, so if we're looking about uh, if we're looking about slices, so in traditional 4G that we see in the left, the parameters for uh, for charging was uh, usually we are uh, referring to three to three parts: the volume based, the event based, and the online real time charging. Uh, while in the 5G, on top of this tree, we can actually go and add now, for example, a slice type or slice result usage, or what was the quality of experience of the slice. And that gives the option, uh, uh, this kind of granularity, give really the option to come and, and build to the marketing guys of the, uh, and to build different new type of packages for different type of applications and come and charge accordingly 
uh, and this is an, just an example of how can a, we can actually provide this monetization using uh, the next generation orchestration and the end-to-end -end service orchestration uh, together with the charging and the policy and the NWDAF uh, uh, components. So how things are, how everything is connected together. So what we see here, we see uh, we see in the network in the core uh, the policy, and uh, we see the charging function, and we see the end-to-end -end network slicing orchestration, which is including the CSMF and the NSMF function. So based on all the indication and all the processing that actually managing the life cycle of the slice, we are creating what we call a charging trigger function. So the slice, the slice manager is actually updating uh, the charging function, uh, what was actually the, the status of, of the slices, what was the usage, what was the level of quality of experience accord, uh, based on the different, uh, according to the different time that uh, the slice was, uh, was up and, and so on. And, and then uh, we can, as we mentioned, uh, actually close it, close the loop with uh, uh, the billing part. Uh, so we're creating uh, an end-to-end -end solution uh, that give the option for the monetization. So this is just describing in order to close, you see all the ingredients uh, when we're talking about uh, how we actually monetize and which components uh, we need to use in order to run this kind of monetization. So I mentioned the monetization, we spoke about the slicing, and, and the next part is about talking about what, how we're doing the closed loop. So what has happened today? Today in the network, usually I have this kind, it's more what we call top down. So I'm getting a request for a doing fulfillment process, and then you know the orchestration, the OSS system and the orchestration is actually going and updating the network and, and the inventory system are updating the resources and the services that actually we, we complete the, this kind of fulfillment process. And, and in parallel, there is a assurance system that actually collecting the fault uh, management and the performance management of the network. And if there is any degradation or it's crossing a threshold, it's open a ticket. And of course, today also those FMPM systems are running and, and also adding machine learning. So it can be more efficient way and actually defining those kind of uh, thresholds. Um, but when we're talking about 5G, we talk about the fact that uh, things, everything is, we said it all, many, many parts are much more uh, are cloudified and uh, containerized and, and virtualized. And we said that uh, I'm now using edge and I need now the orchestration is placing the function in different location and the services. So this kind of, of a, the dynamic nature of the network create a power that I cannot do kind of a static just top down. I need to be to be able to orchestration and, and, the, and the end to end service orchestration, which is also managing the slicing, need to be able to collect those events, analyze it with a very strong analytic and machine learning engine. Also getting the feed from the classical FMPM and the travel ticket system, the travel ticketing system and actually perform what we call closed loop, meaning I need now to change, but not because someone asked me the BSS or there is a new request that is coming top down, but actually because different events and I understand maybe there is now a degradation in the size performance, and now I need to divert some of the traffic or I need to change something uh, with the radio. So only this kind of end-to-end -end, so that they're actually measuring in end-to-end, -end, because sometimes if it's just in a specific domain, the controller will, will be able to handle it, but really to understand if now end-to-end -end the, 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 the performance is not meeting the, the, the SLA KPIs, then I need to take the smart decisions and understand, first of all, I need to understand there is a degradation. So we are running abnormal uh, machine learning to understand the, the behavior and when, when there is a deviation from the, from the normal uh, threshold, but then also to take smart action, what actually to do. And uh, then we are, for example, can be maybe we need to change something in the configuration of the device. So it's related to the inventory and config management, but maybe I need now to run a new, maybe I need to scale in, to scale in or to scale out, uh, or to add the additional and maybe to now to start what we call network build, maybe something that I need now to go into it, uh, more capacity in the transport or more resources in the radio. So some of it can be on the fly, some of that will uh, maybe we need to take into open a process and some of them what we call uh, will be part of an open loop. So I'm creating actually a ticket 
so that the technician can and uh, will understand yes they need maybe now to go and to send something to, someone to the field and put another uh, another uh, capacity uh, uh, for the for the radio as an example so uh, so what are the key takeaways so we we see the the point of the slicing and the, and the and let's say the option it's give for the monetization. And uh, we, we, of course, uh, we can talk about different type of industry like the gaming, like the uh, industry for the zero, uh, smart cities and so on. So it's really created this kind of opportunity to different industries and different verticals actually to use the technology of the slicing. We spoke about that this slicing need to be end to end. So it's not just a run play. It has need to be also to answer the transport the fixed part, I need to be able to give a slice regardless of where the customer is connected. I can sit in, my, in, the, in the coffee shop, I can sit at my home or at my office, and I need to get this kind of performance and slices regardless from which type of access I'm using. And we uh, also spoke about the fact that uh, the new management layer need also to support closed loop with zero touch uh, because the operation and because the dynamic of the network create this kind of a need that without it, uh, it would be almost impossible to manage the network and, and everything need to be in those closed loop in order to really react very fast and not, to, and not just top down uh, are critical uh, for, for the slicing and for the slice management. And I, I just want to, before, uh, before we, uh, we end the session, I just want to share with you a, a very interesting project that we are doing. It's called 5G uh, Oil Open Innovation Lab. Here we are uh, actually doing it with partnership with uh, T-Mobile and uh, with, uh, with Azure and uh, other startup companies that actually uh, we are providing uh, uh, both 4G and 5G network, including uh, fixed wireless access. Uh, so we're actually giving the option uh, to orchestrate. We're running uh, in the edge and this processing, for example, like drones, uh, like very smart analytic that uh, is taking the feeds from the cameras and affecting the things that uh, for it's mainly used for the agriculture uh, use cases. Um, and uh, T-Mobile together with us and, and with those partners are actually bringing more and more uh, startup companies and, and actually to go and to test uh, these use cases in the field. Um, and we encourage more and more companies uh, to join uh, this type of uh, initiatives. And we're very happy, we're very happy that uh, we're really helping and, and, and doing this kind of uh, this kind of projects. With that, I would like to thank you. And um, and if you have any uh, questions, comments, uh, please don't hesitate uh, to ping me. And uh, thank you very much.